Hi, welcome to Lamb Food. It's me, Johnson, with yet another case note discussion. And today we are going to discuss an urgent referral letter. So, in this case note, you are a registered nurse conducting a nurse home visit as part of a routine follow up care for a patient who recently had a hospitalization due to pericarditis. Now, I can give you a brief idea about the scenario. A patient who lives in Newport went to visit her sister in another locality called Green Valley on 23rd August 2019. There she fell sick and was taken to Green Valley Hospital where she was diagnosed with pericarditis and was treated. On the third day, that is 25th August 2019, she was discharged back to her home in Newtown with a nurse home visit arranged for today, that is 30th August 2019. And today, you went to visit the patient at her home and you found her exhibiting symptoms like chest pain, a shortness of breath, fatigue. And you conducted a physical examination where her vital parameters were found to be elevated. So having in mind that the patient had recent hospitalization for pericarditis, you now think of a probability of recurrence of pericarditis or complications related to pericarditis. Now, let's read the case note. And in this case note, I have highlighted the points which we need to include in our letter. Notes, you are a nurse conducting a nurse home visit as part of a routine follow-up care after this patient's recent hospital discharge. Patient details, name, Ms. Patricia Stiles, date of birth, 27th, 1957, age 62, address 57, Market Drive, New Tower. Social background, retired primary school teacher, lives on her own, husband died three years ago due to lung cancer, no children. Now, coming to medical history, hypertension diagnosed in 2011, mild 145 over 95, 2013 moderate 168 over 105, commenced in April, regular monitoring currently well managed at around 140 over 90. Diabetes mellitus type 2 diagnosed in 2013, patient counseled regarding diet lifestyle including weight loss, 2014 commenced oral hypoglycemics, metformin plus glycoside, well managed generally. Now, depression. Diagnosed in June 2016, triggered by death of husband, regular counseling since July 2016 to control mood swings and support DM management. Family history mother, hypertension and diabetes mellitus. Lifestyle smoking, alcohol, non smoker. 1 to 2 glasses of wine per week, exercise, walks dog, 20 minutes a day, diet ongoing counseling regarding diabetes mellitus management to maintain balanced diet. Medications, cunapril, acupril, oral, 400 mg, twice daily, metformin, diabex, oral, 500 mg, twice daily, glycoside, apoglycoside, MR, oral, 30 mg daily and now Green Valley Hospital treatment record. 23rd August 2019 patient visiting sister for a weekend. Sister lives three hours away from Newtown in Green Valley. Patient admitted to Green Valley Hospital late evening with a fever, sharp and pleuritic chest pain, worse on breathing, general weakness, malaise, tachycardia that is rapid heartbeat. On 24th assessment vital signs Respiratory rate 29, BP 170 over 106, heart rate 98, temperature 90, 39.3 degrees Celsius. Full blood examination, elevated ESR, CRP, WCC. Inflammation, stress. Throat swab, viral influenza type B, chest X ray, normal. Echocardiogram, pericarditis. Management, IV saline and ibuprofen 600 mg every 8 hours. Evaluation, viral influenza type B plus pericarditis. On 25th August, patient discharged and advised on self-care at home. Niece drove patient home and agreed to stay overnight for three nights. Follow-up nurse home visit arranged for 
30th August 2019. And now next song visit on 30th August 2019. Observation, patient unhappy, reports feeling chest pain, relieved by sitting up, shortness of breath, fatigue, frustrated with the progress of recovery, medication adherence, reports complaints and regular blood glucose monitoring. Vital signs, low-grade fever, temperature 38.1 degrees Celsius, elevated respiratory rate, 28, heart rate 115, BP 125 over 78, usual BP 140 over 90. Knees no longer stay overnight, work commitments in green blood. Assessment, patient unwell, nil improvement, query relapse, complications of pericarditis, plan, Organize urgent hospital transfer to Newtown Hospital. Write referral letter to emergency department. Include relevant medications, patient history, test results, observations. Now, writing task using the information in the case notes. Write a letter of referral to the emergency department consultant on duty, outlining the case and requesting urgent assessment and management for pericarditis. Address the letter to emergency department consultant on duty. Newtown Hospital, 100 Main Street, Newtown. So this is the case note. So now, uh, before we start writing the letter, all the nurses out there, Langford has both online and offline classes for OET under expert trainers and meticulous focus on all modules, especially on reading and listening, as nurses find those two modules the hardest nuts to crack. So choose us to chase your dreams. So now let's start writing the letter and you should know that we need to concise our letter to in between 180 to 200 words. So starting with address part. In the address part, we need to include four items that is date of writing, address of the recipient, regarding that is uh, the name of the patient with the date of birth or age and salutation of the recipient. So let's start it this way. A date of writing 30th August 2019. Address. Address here the recipient's name is not available. Only the designation is there. So let's write it this way. The consultant on duty, emergency department, Newtown Hospital, Hunter Main Street, Newtown. Now regarding referral, that is patient name with date of birth. So, regarding Miss Patricia Styles, comma, DOB, colon, 27 April 1957. Now, we move to the next, that is, Dear Doctor, that is salutation. This is the address part. Four points in the address part. Now, let's move on to the uh, introductory paragraph. In the introductory paragraph, we need to have three points. That is, the full name of the patient then the purpose and the basis condition for which we are writing the letter. So now let's write the intro this way. Thank you for seeing Ms. Patricia Styles, comma, a 62-year-old retired school teacher, comma, who requires urgent investigation of post-field relapse or complications of pericarditis. So now let's move on to the second paragraph. It's a referral letter and it's an urgent referral letter. So whenever we write urgent referral letter, we need to keep one thing in mind, that the physician always looks for the immediate reason for patient's referral. So we need to always write the latest events whenever we write an urgent letter. Here, the latest event is the home visit which you conducted today. So now let's read the nurse home visit that happened today on 30th August 2019. Observations, patient unhappy, reports feeling chest pain, relieved by sitting up, shortness of breath, fatigue, frustrated with the progress of recovery, medication adherence, reports complaints and regular blood glucose monitoring, vital signs, low-grade fever, temperature 38.1 degrees Celsius, elevated respiratory 28, heart rate 115, BP 125 over 78, usual BP 114 over 90. Knees no longer staying overnight while commitments in grid value. Here I have just highlighted a few points which we need to definitely include our, in our letter. And you can 
omit the other uh, points. That is, one is patient unhappy, frustrated with the progress of recovery. It's all because these are patients' mental status, and uh, we are writing a cardiac. We are writing for a cardiac evaluation, a to an urgent cardiac evaluation where patients' mental status uh, doesn't play a big role. And the medication insurance reports, complaints, like blood blood glucose monitor, all these are related to maybe patients' uh, diabetes meditus. And now knees no longer staying overnight. Work up. This also is uh, very irrelevant. Assessment. When it comes to assessment, uh, there is a query. That means suspicion or doubt. You are doubting. You are a nurse, so you cannot make a formal diagnosis. You just doubt that the patient either has a recurrence or complications of pericarditis. These are the points that we find in the latest uh, event that happened today. So let's write it in this way. Okay. So uh, during my home visit today, comma, Miss Tyrus reported chest pain, relieved by sitting up, semicolon, shortness of breath, and fatigue. It, uh, sometimes when we write about today's events, uh, we can write it in a uh, single percentage using that can be written. If you write it like this today, the styles reports, we can write in single percentage. But here I have written during my home visit today. So during my home visit means it happened uh, in the past. That's the reason I have used here past uh, simple past tense. Okay. On assessment, she had a low grade fever with a temperature of 38.1 degrees Celsius, respiratory of 38. Heart rate of 115 and blood pressure 125 over 78, lower than the usual rating. So this is the second paragraph. But with this particular point mentioned here, it cannot provide a proper indication for the suspicion of pericarditis. So in order to substantiate this particular paragraph, this particular point, we need to write about patient's previous hospitalization where the patient was admitted for pericarditis and he was recovering from that till now. So let's move on to the third paragraph where we are going to write about patient's previous hospitalization that happened in Green Valley Hospital. So now let's read Green Valley Hospital treatment record. On 23rd August 2019, Patient visiting sister for a weekend. Sister lives three hours away from Newtown in Green Valley. Patient admitted to Green Valley Hospital late evening with a fever, sharp and chloritic chest pain, worse on breathing, general weakness, malaise, tachycardia. On 24th assessment, vital signs, uh, respiratory rate, BP, HR, T, temperature, everything is mentioned. Then full blood examination, elevated ESR, CRP, WCC. Throat swab, viral influenza type B, chest X-ray, normal. So um, that can be uh, just omitted. Uh, then echocardiogram, pericarditis, management, IV saline, IV profen 600 milligram every eight hours. Evaluation, viral influenza type B plus pericarditis. Then on 25th August, patient discharge, advised on self-care at home, needs draw patient home, agreed to stay overnight for three nights. Follow-up nurse home visit arranged for 30th August 2019. So it is very elaborated here, the um, hospitalization in Green Valley Hospital. And uh, uh, we don't have many points to be omitted from this particular paragraph. But what we can do is we can concise these points as much as possible. So let's write it in this way. Now the third paragraph. Ms. Tiles was earlier admitted to Green Valley Hospital on 23rd August 2019. Here I have mentioned the name of the hospital just because you are not representing that particular hospital. Whenever you represent a hospital, you can just write admitted to hospital or to our hospital. And it's uh, the treatment or the hospitalization happened in some other hospital. So let's write the full name of the hospital. Okay. Now, Ms. Styles was earlier admitted to Green Valley Hospital on 23rd August 2019 after falling sick while visiting her sister. She complained of fever, chloritic chest pain, tachycardia, and general malaise. Her vital signs and FB report were out of the normal rate. The throat swab revealed the viral influenza type B. An echocardiogram indicated pericarditis. 
Now, after being managed with IV saline and ibuprofen, 600 mg every 8 hours, she was discharged to home on 25th August with a nurse home visit arranged for today. That is 30th August 2019, the day you are writing the letter. Now, when it comes to the fourth paragraph, uh, you are writing an urgent reform letter. So, uh, whenever you write an urgent reform letter, the physician needs to know the pre-existing disease condition that the patient has and the regular medication that the patient is on. So, now let's move on to the medical history. In the medical history, we have the patient has hypertension and the details are given there, diabetes mellitus, then depression. Uh, but uh, here we need to mention only the disease conditions, not the uh, details there. Then family medical history, mother has hypertension, diabetes. We can just, uh, it is very irrelevant, so omit it. Lifestyle, smoking, alcohol, uh, non-smoker, one to two glasses of wine per week, so irrelevant. Exercise, walk, stop, 20 minutes a day. And then diet, ongoing counseling regarding DM management to maintain father's diet. All these points can be just omitted. Just write only hypertension, diabetes, mellitus, and depression. And medications. Medication also is very important uh, whenever you write a urgent letter. So here you find uh, two medications. Quinopril, Acupril, Metformin, Diabex, Glyclaside, Apoglyclaside, MR. Here you have generic names and brand names. Quinopril, Metformin, Glyclaside are generic names and Acupril, Diabex, Apoglyclaside, MR are brand names. So you can go with any of them, if you are, but we need to ensure that you maintain uniformity. So let's go with the, the generic names in our letter. Okay, so now let's write the fourth paragraph. Miss Tide's medical history is remarkable for hypertension, diabetes mellitus type 2, and depression. Her regular medications are quinapril, coma, 40 mg, coma, choice daily. Semicolon, metformin, comma, 500 mg, comma, twice daily, and glyclaside, comma, 30 mg, comma, daily. So, this is the okay. fourth paragraph. So, now let's conclude it in this way. Miss Tiles, comma, therefore, comma, is being referred to you for further assessment and management of our condition at your earliest convenience. Here, uh, I have used, um, I don't say that it's unique, but in a different way. Usually, I find candidates write in this way. Consider the above or in view of the above. It would be appreciated if you could provide urgent assessment and treatment for Ms. Patricia Stein's condition. That is perfectly all right, but it is an English language testing. So, uh, if you can write, if you can make it a point that your letter stands unique from others, you will fetch more marks. So just have a unique way of writing, your personalized way of writing, that will get you more marks. So if you have any further queries, please do not hesitate to contact me, U.S. Faithfully Registered Nurse. And here I have used U.S. Faithfully instead of U.S. Sincerely, just because here, whenever, uh, I mean, uh, the recipient's name is not there in the case note, you need to write U.S. Faithfully. And if the recipient's name is available, just sign it off with the you are sincere. So, well, uh, that's it. If you find this video worth watching, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel.